Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about finasteride. And so ever since I've stopped taking finasteride, I've been very fascinated with the research that I found from various scientific articles, um, from you know hair loss forums, and from various opinions from doctors and users of finasteride. And so I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are very cautious and hesitant when they're thinking of taking finasteride. Since the usage of this um, drug is so controversial, I wanted to talk about it and then, you know, just hear from both sides on what people would have to say. So, as you guys are aware, I stopped taking finasteride as of April of, uh, of this year. And I've been taking about four months. And just to be clear, I didn't have any side effects from taking this medication. Um, but some of the common uh, side effects that people experience can result in sexual dysfunction, depression, um, you know, issues with cognitive function, brain fog, low libido and some people even report shrinkage of their uh, prostate. You know, I did stop taking finasteride because of the information that I've gathered online and from my own personal research and the fact that it can alter the neurohormones in the central nervous system. So I'm not trying to convince anyone to take or not to take finasteride. Um, you know, taking this drug is elective and each person is obligated to do what he needs to do to treat his male pattern baldness. So this video is simply based on my own research that's been done online and from available sources. Um, so please take it with a grain of salt. All right, so we know that finasteride inhibits 2,5-alpha reductase isoenzymes, which are types two and types three. The 5-alpha reductase type one is mainly found in the brain, the muscle, the liver, and the sebaceous glands. We know that the 5-alpha reductase type two can be found in the prostate, the seminal vesicles, the liver, the hair follicles, and so a lot of people are under the misconception that, you know, since finasteride doesn't inhibit type 1, which is found in the brain, it doesn't necessarily affect the brain. However, we know that 5-alpha reductase type 2 is expressed in very significant amounts in the spinal cord motor neurons in similar amounts found in the prostate. So we know that 5-alpha reductase converts testosterone into DHT, and DHT is the main culprit for male pattern baldness. But we also know that 5-alpha reductase converts progesterone into dihydroprogesterone. These conversions are ultimately going to be inhibited by finasteride and so that means the production of neurosteroids are also inhibited since their metabolic activity or pathways continue like this. So dihydroprogesterone converts into allopregnanolone. These conversions are catalyzed by an enzyme called 3-alpha hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, which is also commonly known as 3-alpha HSD. So aside from the sexual dysfunction that people can experience from taking finasteride, in this video I want to talk about the neurological impact that finasteride does to the central nervous system. We know that finasteride inhibits the allopregnanolone production in the spinal cord, and that's where mainly the 5-alpha reductase type 2 is present and it also reduces the allopregnanolone levels in the brain and other parts of the central nervous system since these parts are going to be dependent on the peripheral 5-alpha reductase type 2 conversion of progesterone to dihydroprogesterone which is then converted to allopregnanolone by 3-alpha HSD. So you guys might wonder why is allopregnanolone so important? Well, it increases neurogenesis it improves the performance of learning and memory, it regulates emotions, it enhances myelination, and having the proper levels of serum allopregnanolone can prevent neural degeneration, which can lead to many neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease. So the question is gonna be, what is the long-term effects of allopregnanolone depletion? And as allopregnanolone has vital function in the myelination of neurons and how progressive loss of neurosteroid synthesis can contribute to neural degeneration. Now, according to researchers at John Hopkins, there were pregnant women with low levels of allopregnanolone and they experienced mood disorders such as anxiety and depression, which seems to correlate with some of the side effects of finasteride. Low levels of allopregnanolone can also be observed in patients who are suffering from neurological disorders such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. Now, while low levels of allopregnanolone are found in patients suffering from the said neurological disorders, there's no direct link between the usage of finasteride and these disorders. It's also in the same sense that people suffering from multiple sclerosis or heart disease also have low levels of vitamin D, which is a proven fact. And having low levels of vitamin D does not mean that you're gonna get multiple sclerosis or heart disease. 
although it can definitely increase your chances of getting certain illnesses over somebody who has normal levels of vitamin D. However, we can merely speculate that this is a possibility since low levels of allopregnanolone can be seen in people who are using finasteride and also people suffering from neurological problems. And structural alterations of myelin, whether by genetics or the environment or through medication such as finasteride, might occur in early stages of neurological diseases. Now, some studies show that the neuroactive steroid production, such as allopregnanolone, is going to be increased when there is spinal cord injury. This is the body's reaction to the damage, and usually it works fine for healthy individuals in order to repair the demyelinization. So when you're using finasteride, what happens is you can not only cause neurological damage by the inhibition of neurosteroids, but you don't let your body recover by the natural response of increased allopregnanolone by 5-alpha reductase type 2 because you are inhibiting what is meant to heal you. Since nobody really has studied the long-term neurological effects of finasteride, users are merely going to be test subjects on what unknown effects finasteride can lead to due to allopregnanolone depletion. Now, another thing to consider is to find out exactly what levels are considered dangerous for allopregnanolone and if this continuation of finasteride can reverse in the allopregnanolone depletion in the central nervous system. Obviously, we need to do more research on long-term finasteride users and how it can affect the central nervous system as neurological diseases actually can take decades and decades to develop. Although there's no concrete evidence that finasteride leads to any type of neurological illnesses, we can only speculate that due to this, some people can experience slurred speech, balance, cognitive awareness, as well as brain fog. And it's a good thing to speculate and see how these issues can be perhaps be tied to the use of finasteride. So if you're someone who actually stopped taking the use of finasteride, I've read that omega-3s such as fish oil can help with the repair and growth of neurons, antioxidants such as grapes, blueberries, and pomegranate, and doing cardiovascular exercise on a regular basis appear to be beneficial. It might also be a good idea to get an MRI scan done on the brain and the spinal cord to see the extent or the lack of extent of damage done on the central nervous system. But in another video, I'm going to be talking about how we can increase your allopregnanum levels through food and different types of supplements. Ultimately, the good news is that based on my research, nobody has really suffered from uh, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's based on the use of finasteride. So in conclusion, there is no concrete evidence that the use of finasteride and the depletion of allopregnanolone leads to any neurological disorders. However, we can only speculate from the given information and research done and attempt to piece together how it can affect the central nervous system and to understand why certain people suffer from neurological symptoms when taking the drug due to the hormonal imbalances in the body. Now, ultimately, if you're tolerating the medication well and you feel that the potential benefits outweigh the potential risks, then stick with it. If the benefits are not going to be sufficient to outweigh the alteration in your body's chemistry, then I would say to stop taking it or try cutting it down. Um, you know, honestly, I wish there was a clear answer, but in situations like this, it's up to you, your comfort level, and your needs. So thanks for watching this video. I know that I'm going to be getting a lot of comments pertaining to this controversial topic. And so feel free to leave any comments that you might have. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.